Ladies and gentlemen, here I am in Italy, Maranello, and we're near the Ferrari factory. However, you may have seen that video before about the Ferrari and it being sponsored by AMD, but now the real news comes to light. I was here for the Threadripper launch, and it was incredible because AMD are bringing something massive to the table, and that is 32 cores, 64 threads, and they're bringing it at $17.99 USD, and that's dropping August the 13th, so stay tuned for the review. But they're also releasing with that another three different models, and that is the 2970X with its 24 cores, 48 threads. That's coming in at $12.99, and they're also releasing the 2950X and 2920X with their 16 cores and 12 cores, respectively, and they're essentially updates of the previous first-gen Threadripper CPUs. Now, you do get the 12 nanometer plus architecture upgrades like you did over the 2700X when they were released over the first gen. And also the good thing around is this time as well is you've got that backwards compatibility with those motherboards. So if you've gone out and bought an X399 motherboard, then the great news is you can just reuse that board. And even if you bought one brand new, uh, one off from previous stock and you got it at a good price, for example, then you can use a USB key without a CPU in there and BIOS flash it to support the new second generation Ryzen Threadripper CPUs. But not only do you get that really competitive pricing and the massive amount of PCIe lanes and even the lower latencies compared to the first gen Threadripper, you also get now an introduction of some new products. For instance, the Raze Ripper Cooler, which can handle up to 250 watts TDP, which is the out of the box TDP settings for both the 24 core and the 32 core, where the, all the attention seems to be focused with this launch. However, let's go inside the event and see what they're doing with these CPUs because I heard there's some extreme overclocking. So we'll take a look at some figures and see what comes out of this, especially with the new Ryzen Master software, where you can get the best out of both single and all core performance. So now we're inside the event and the first demo I got drawn to is Adobe Dimension CC. And essentially it does all the ray tracing and this really showcases the power of the 32 core Threadripper CPU. You hit that render button and it'll essentially separate all the different objects into easy uh, Photoshop exports so they can then trace it by layer. And you see all those cores just being utilized at near 100%. This really just finishes the job off in like a minute and seven seconds. And it's really a, a matter of when the software supports the 32 core 64 thread process that's when you get the most benefit out of something like the 2990 WX CPU. So next up here we've got Maya, and here's a clear demo of how powerful the 2990 WX can be for people in this profession. We've got the plug-in here with Arnold Render View, and it's rendering it out real time. Like if you want to get a shot on how the final product's going to look, how the light's going to bounce off objects, and certain uh, final ray tracing segments of this initial sketch here, you can do that and save a lot of time. So it's really incredible when these 32 cores get pegged, how just, just really how raw and how much power you have at your disposal, which is I think in the right situation as we looked at before with Adobe Dimension CC, really showcases the power of this CPU. And we can see right here in live time, just those cores being pegged at 100%. And then it's actually finalizing this image in our Arnold Render View, which is a plugin for Maya. So now here you have the Radeon Pro render demo and they're showing a Ferrari being rendered in real time. Now this is a balance between the CPU and the GPU. And again, the 32 core 64 threads are being pegged at 100%. And these pink uh, squares here essentially uh, show that that's the portion that the CPU is rendering while the portion that you can't see is actually being rendered by the GPU. So they're working hand in hand to get this image rendered out. Very powerful software, essentially for 3D modeling and getting a final look, what something would look like realistically in the real world. So of course, a massive part of X399 is the motherboards, and Azus are offering an upgrade kit. If you've already got a Zenith Extreme, you can then get the fan for the VRM cooling. Uh, but there are some new models as well coming out from MSI and Gigabyte, refresh models with essentially massive, massive VRMs, beefed up beyond that of belief. Uh, so if you're into overclocking, you may wish to take a look at one of those boards. But of course, the standard X399 boards, as we talked about before, all you have to do is drop a BIOS update, and you should be good to go, especially for achieving a sweet spot overclock on the uh, 2990 WX CPUs. And with the introduction of TR4 sockets, we have cooling solutions, and here we have the Wraith Ripper Cooler, coming in around $100. I'm not certain on the price just yet, but it will handle the 2990 
WX out of the box, absolutely fine, even with Precision Overdrive, which is a new feature that they're bringing on their CPUs, basically automatic overclocking. However, you will void your warranty on the CPU if you decide to utilize that feature, but this thing can definitely handle it. Cooler Master also releasing a MA621P as well as a 360mm TR4 edition cooler with a bigger base plate that will fully cover these new Threadripper CPUs. Uh, Enemax have previously done it. Corsair haven't quite catched on to the trend, even though they do have support for the TR4 socket. They haven't quite caught on with that massive cooler and capacing all of the CPU area. So now on the table here, we've got the 2990WX on LN2, and we're going, of course, for sky-high scores in Cinebench. What I've seen so far is 4.9 gigahertz on all 32 cores, and that managed to score a Cinebench score over 7,000. 100 points. I did manage to get that on camera before this crashed out. And also another thing about these CPUs is that they are utilizing the top 5% of dies and putting them in the Threadripper CPUs. So in other words, they will be the best of the best in terms of efficiency, which means you can get higher speeds, or at least in comparison to the 2700X, you can come close to those 8 core speeds without compromising too much. And that about wraps up the Threadripper second generation unboxing and event here. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. But also there may be some questions of what's the difference now between Epic and uh, Threadripper the second generation since you now have the 32 core on the stack. And there's the uh, eight channel memory on the Epic versus the quad channel on the Threadripper second generation CPUs. Also, Epic does scale. You can have more than just one CPU connecting to each other, so you can have up to 64 cores or more uh, if you have two Epic CPUs on a workstation uh, motherboard, for example, or a server-grade motherboard, as opposed to the X399, which can only support up to one CPU. Now, a big reason for upgrading from the previous Threadripper CPUs, which is 16 core, is that, if, for instance, in Maya or uh, other programs, when you've got a single license, it's only for one CPU. So upgrading that CPU, you're extracting a lot more value as we saw here today on some of those demos where they were utilizing all those cores and all those threads. Uh, so it was just a really cool event here today. Saw some performance, saw some overclocking. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Can definitely handle it. There's also the 360 mil radiators and water coolers that we've seen come out of the side the event and see what they're doing with these CPUs because I heard there is some extreme overclocking. So we'll take a look at some figures and see what comes out of this, especially with the new Ryzen Master software where you can control the best out of the both.